Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of my response to Calvin Stroud's 10,000 pound challenge. In the first part, we looked at his claim that it's impossible to have rectangular buildings with vertical walls on a round earth and showed that even for extremely tall buildings, the effect of earth's curvature can be neglected. In the second part of his challenge, Calvin asked for a way to measure this curvature and that's what we'll do today. Anyone who has ever googled how to measure the Earth's circumference or looked for it here on YouTube is familiar with the famous experiment of Eratosthenes, who calculated it from the different angles of elevation of the Sun at noon in two different locations on the same meridian. But it has some downsides. The two locations must be hundreds of kilometers apart and you cannot really do the experiment alone. And it has been explained so many times and ignored by the Flat Earth community equally often that it gets a little boring. So I thought I could give Calvin something new to ignore and go with a different measurement. The dip of the horizon when seen from an elevated location like a mountain. This way to measure Earth's circumference was invented by Abu Ryan al-Biruni, a Persian scholar and polymath of the 11th century. It's simpler than Eratosthenes' method yet no less ingenious. And here is how it works. We need a mountain top with a clear line of sight to the horizon at sea level, a theodolite and some trigonometry. The line of sight between us and the horizon is tangential to the Earth's surface. On a flat Earth, this line should be parallel to a horizontal line. But if the Earth is a sphere and its surface is curved, the horizon should appear to be lower. And if we can measure an angle between our horizontal line and the line between our elevated position and the horizon, we can calculate Earth's radius if we know our mountain's altitude. For simplicity's sake, we'll do this only in two dimensions. We don't know the exact position of C, the furthest point that we can still see on the surface yet. But because the line between B, our mountain top, and C must be tangential to Earth, we can construct a rectangular triangle ABC with A being the center of the Earth. We can also see immediately from this drawing that the angle alpha, the point A, is equal to the angle delta that we measure with our theodolite. Because C is the hypotenuse of ABC, B must be equal to C times cosinus alpha. B is also equal to the radius we want to measure, R. So R must be R plus our mountain's altitude, H, times cosinus alpha. Now we can distribute cosinus alpha and isolate R. The radius we're looking for is our elevation over sea level times cosinus alpha divided by 1 minus cosinus alpha. And because B is the hypotenuse of a triangle with the same angles as ABC, and its length is Earth's radius r, it's easy to find c's coordinates. cy is r times cosinus alpha and cx is r times sinus alpha. Good old Pythagoras then tells us the distance to the furthest visible point on the horizon, c. If you measure the dip of the horizon from a mountain 4 kilometers high, for example Mauna Kea on Hawaii, you get something very close to 2 degrees. And as you can see, when we simulate this measurement in our model by adjusting the line of sight to this angle and set h to 4 kilometers, the resulting Earth radius is roughly 6600 kilometers. And that's a pretty good approximation to Earth's actual radius, which is 6370 kilometers on average. The line of the horizon is 230 kilometers away. When we return to the beach and look to the horizon from only 2 meters above sea level, this is what we get to see. The angle alpha is only a 25th of a degree, too small to measure because usually the horizon is a little blurry and side effects like refraction and atmospheric perturbances become too significant for the accuracy we would require from this viewing point. The horizon is now 5 kilometers away, but even at this short distance, the drop caused by Earth's curvature is already almost 2 meters and that's why we can see objects beyond that distance disappear from the bottom up when they move further away. And that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, press that button and have a nice day. Once again, a huge thank you to everyone involved with one of the following projects that made this video possible.
See you next time.